Today's edition of Mac Voices is supported by Mac Voices Magazine, our free Flipboard magazine that brings you some of the best Mac, iPhone, and iPad productivity tips on the web. High in signal, low in noise, just like Mac Voices, Mac Voices Magazine includes information on how you can get more out of your Apple technology. Subscribe at macvoices.com slash magazine or search for Mac Voices Magazine on Flipboard. And by Take Control Books, the answers you need now from leading experts. Learn more and download yours at TakeControlBooks.com. Welcome to Mac Notables on Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Mac community. I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, we're very lucky to have him, but he, 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 needs, he needs a new job now. We have Ben Carson's campaign manager, Mr. Oh. Bri- Mr. Brian Chaffin. Oh, oh my. <laughs> that's... That's your opening salvo. That's that's well, not salvo. You, at the at the beginning of Apple Context Machine, you always have titles for yourself, and so that's I thought true. I, I thought I'd take the burden off. Of oh you. yeah, I, man, I should have. Ah, I could have gone there. Yeah, and, and to be fair, I do believe that the pyramids were built by Moses to store grain. <laughs> so you know that kind of puts me squarely in Carson's camp. Brian, it was just an intro. Don't go too far with it. <laughs> how, how are you, my friend? It's good to see you. Grain, <laughs> the worst si- silos. I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good. It's good, to, it's, it's good to, I can't. I can't believe that that's how you launched this off. That's that's fantastic. I, I love you. I've always loved you. But I, now I adore you. I've been working on that all day. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Oh man, gee, I'm uh, seriously. I'm so glad that that we get a chance to chat a little bit, simply because I know this has really a, been a super busy time for you. And and it just seems to get crazier and busier all the time. We have had uh, an unending torrent of Apple news in the last what two weeks now. Yeah, just unending. Like I mean, every day it feels like there's one to three developments that 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 we just don't have time to cover. And that's just astounding. It's and it's uh it's it's been a very interesting time for sure. At this point, I want to put a plug in, and I'm very serious about this, for all the Mac Observer's coverage of the the, the FBI v. Apple thing, um, because it's 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 intelligent, it's well thought out, it's reasoned, and that that goes for you, Jeff, um, John, everybody involved, Kelly, Thanks, of course, man. doing the, the Daily Observations podcast. Um, it's 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 a great place to kind of go and hear some some things you know you may not always agree with everything but it, it's well thought out and if you agree with everything we're saying we're doing something wrong to be uh, honest that's probably very true very true can't please everyone no no and this and this is a tough situation brian I'm, i've I, i'd like to just let you riff on it for a second and you know to talk about from from your unique perspective and i i, I mean that too you've been around this game for a while you hold very specific views on on privacy and all what do you think of of how this is all coming down well do we do we need to do we need to step back and offer background or is this, do you think this is something your listeners and watchers yeah, I, I think i think they are they're going to be pretty familiar with it i hate to waste time on background just simply because you know, if you're interested in this, you already know what's going on. And if you're not, then you probably don't want to watch the better part of this show simply because, you know, it's not going to mean a lot to you. But I think it is important that we help educate folks about what's going on and why. So, you know, maybe pick up, you know, any background you think is necessary from your perspective. Wow. Um, so let's see here. We have the FBI and we have Apple. We have law enforcement and we have privacy um, activists. We have uh, the intelligence world and the executive branch, and we have the technology world. And these forces have all been increasingly at odds now for a long time. And we saw a version of this exact same fight that we're seeing now. We saw that in the 90s um, over uh, encryption The and the... Uh, concern about exporting computers that were powerful enough to encrypt things that the CIA and the NSA couldn't 
decrypt. And that was a battle that was fought in the 90s. It was called the Crypto Wars. Fantastic name. Um, and quite frankly, the NSA and the, and the CIA actually saw light on it. And they understood, they eventually understood, that America, the United States of America, is stronger with a very strong tech industry. And that the people and our companies are stronger when they can actually be protected against the bad guys. And that even though that makes it harder for our good guys to sometimes do their job, that the benefits outweighed the detriments. So we saw this, this battle that was fought. It was won. Uh, a similar battle was fought over something called the Clipper Chip. Do you remember that? Oh, very well. I, I figured you did, actually. Um, but the, the, the Clipper Chip was going to be a chip that was going to be included in every um, mobile phone that allowed uh, the um, uh, law enforcement and intelligence services to be able to uh, get a backdoor into your communications at will. Of course... It's a terrible idea, and they lost that fight too. The pri privacy, um, the privacy activists won that. Reality won it. The tech world won it. And the ironic thing is that having lost those battles, and I'm, I'm referring to to the law enforcement and intelligence side of things, having lost those battles, um, they then entered what general michael hayden called a golden age of surveillance did you watch that that video interview no i did not see that one. so general michael hayden was uh, a general he was uh put in charge of the cia he was then put in charge of the nsa and then he became i think national security the head of the national security council i forget he basically had an advisory role uh directly advising uh, president bush um, he was appointed by both Democratic and Republican administrations, the Clinton administration and the Bush administration. And he gave an interview. He's been actually on, um, uh, been giving lots of interview, interviews where he said that we, we, you know, we lost those, we lost those fights, but then we entered this golden age of surveillance. And the reason why they entered this golden age of surveillance is because of all the communications that could be slurped up across the internet. And all the metadata that could be gathered directly from the uh, phone companies. And he said that he very, he very specifically said that America was stronger with having strong encryption, strong privacy, and that America was stronger having this stronger tech industry. Um, and that these things outweighed the fact that it make that, that, that strong encryption makes it harder for law enforcement and our surveillance, surveillance, surveillance services to do their job. He understands this, but yet we're having this fight again. I, I, I wish, I, I guess I wish he was still in public life. Uh, he's not, he retired, I think in 2007. Um, because, because we're just going through the same stuff again. The, the, the FBI basically wants, doesn't want there to be devices that they can't get into. And, to a lesser extent, the NSA and the CIA want that too, although they're making a lot less noise about it, thankfully. They did recently this week uh, blame the press. Uh, that might have been last week, but they recently uh, blamed the press for educating terrorists about encryption, which, which I find um, uh, philosophically reprehensible for them to, to say that and, and also a bit stupid. Um, but the FBI doesn't want there to be devices that people can't, the, 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 they can't access with a with a lawfully um, uh, with a lawful warrant. And here's the problem with that, because I understand that that notion, right? I I wish that we lived in a world where we could all have privacy and security, except when a lawfully obtained warrant is issued. Because bad people do bad things and we need to, and, and sometimes we need to find them, and sometimes we need to stop them, and sometimes we need to prevent things from happening. The problem is, is that reality doesn't give us both. We cannot have privacy and security in the, in, in the digital age and give backdoors 
to the government that only the government can access or that only a company like Apple or Google or Facebook or whomever can, can, uh, can access. Because once they exist, they're available to anyone and everyone. These are like basic fundamental things that the encryption world has understood for a very, very long time. But, you know, we have a, a new generation of civil servants and, and elected officials, many of whom don't understand this. And that's why, that's why we're having this particular fight. Brian, I find it so frustrating that there's so much ignorance or refusal to be educated about this on the part of so many people. I mean, there's, there's a lot of stupid to go around here in, in this scenario. I don't think there's anybody that would say it's not a good idea to get into the phones of the, 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 the shooters and get any usable information out. That, that's a given. And, and yeah. you know, that, and, and by the way, I think at this point, you know, it's appropriate to say we obviously extend our condolences to the families of, course. of the victims. That, that, that too should go without saying. The, the trouble is that it's, it sets precedence. And, and our legal system, our, our system of justice is based on precedence. So if we do this, then it means that they can do the next one and the next one and the next one. And it may not... It, you know, that many people getting shot and injured. Yeah, no question about it. But when does it come down to, you know, somebody stole my cat and I want to break into their phone, somebody else's phone, to see if they took it? And, and I realize that's an extreme example, but it, that's what it comes down to is, you know, where do you draw the line? The other thing that frustrates me personally so much is that, and I will point to the politicians. The politicians say, uh, they hope that Silicon Valley can work with us and find a way so that you know we can have a back door, back door in, a back way in, and still, still have privacy and security. But you can't. You can't. It's it's a black and white. You can't have one without the other. Or I guess yeah, you can't have one without the other. Why is that so tough to understand? Well, part of it is um, I just posted a rant you know, minutes ago about uh, Representative David Jolly, a Republican out of Florida who has introduced the, um, what did he call it? The No Taxpayer Support for Apple Act, um, uh, where basically he says that, uh, I'll, I'll even quote him, uh, quote, taxpayers should not be subsidizing a company that refuses to cooperate in a terror investigation that left 14 Americans dead on American soil. Representative Jolly can't see past act of terrorism. It's an act of terrorism. Obviously, that's a bad thing. And obviously, we all have to do everything in our power to help the government stop an act of terrorism. End of sentence. There, you know, there's no other thoughts to be, to, 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 to be made on the issue. There are no other factors. Nothing else matters except that. And, I, you know, I, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and assume he just is ignorant of the, of the technology implications of what he's saying. And that he's um, that, he, that he doesn't know, Brian. I'm I'm with you. I, I have to say that no, I did not sit down and watch all, all, all was it five or six hours of the congressional hearings. I've I've watched I've seen some of it. Um, I've heard quite a bit of reporting on it. it. Seemed like some of the legislators acquitted themselves very well as far as understanding technology. Others, not so much, and. I just I don't know what to make of this. I'm not a student of legislation either, so I don't know if this is the first time that um, legislation has been introduced to to take a shot at a particular company with government spending a particular company based on a stance like this. But that seems to set a really really dangerous precedent between the uh, the government and private industry. Well, this this law has I mean, this this will never be passed ever. I mean it's. It's a. It, it could simply be a feel good legislation act, but I mean, I, I, I have no doubt that Representative Jolly's motives are mostly good. I, I think that most most of the actors involved in this have very. I mean, they they have their version of our best interests at heart, and and that most of them, if not all of them, are doing what they think is the right thing to do. It's just the reality is that um, it's not the right thing to do. 
you know, we either have security or we don't have security when it comes to our mobile devices. Either the government has a back door and everybody has a back door or no one does. It's either the U.S. sets the standard for allowing privacy uh, on our mobile devices or the U.S. doesn't and then the rest of the world follows suit. The U.S. or the U.K. is this close as it is to uh, making it illegal to to not give government direct backdoor access into anything and everything. Um, China, you know, shockingly is very interested in, in this very same thing. And, and China shockingly has not yet made Apple or any other Western company do this. Although, um, uh, some of their own companies are believed to, uh, have done so to, to give the government backdoor access to their devices, probably something similar to the Clipper chip. Uh, I don't know the specifics. Um, and then of course, you know, every, I mean, the Russia would love to do the same thing and, you know, every, what's, what's the quote? I think, you know, the quote better than I do. Every tin plated. A swaggering tin plated dictator with delusions of godhood, I believe. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> great. A great line. You know, they, they, they'd all follow suit and, um, our government should be helping Apple do this our, our our country should be making sure that we have the most secure platforms in the world to protect our people and our companies from criminals terrorists and foreign governments out to steal our ip i mean and it just infuriates me that a force like the fbi would be putting its might and weight behind making us weaker it infuriates me, Chuck. Okay, Brian. So I'm going to play devil's advocate like I always do here. And, and because I, I do agree with you. Um, but how do you respond to it? Because this is something that you were saying Representative Jolly can't see past terrorists. I think that they also, so many of them can't see past, um, they can't see past the, the simple answer that Okay, so let's say they force Apple to do this. There are other end-to-end -end encryption tools out there that are going to be in use. And with the internet being the way the internet is, they can make it illegal for a US company to create an encrypted tool, but a, a totally encrypted tool, but that doesn't mean that a coder in South America, Russia, China, anywhere else, can't create an, an encryption tool that they don't have a back door into. I, I just, I don't, I guess I don't get it why they're fighting this battle unless it's just that it's going to make it so much easier. And I think that maybe nobody's going to be paying any attention to it anymore. I, my, my best case scenario, my optimist half glass or glass half full view is that they just don't understand. They don't understand that you can't have a breakable box that everyone can break into. They, they just don't know. At least I hope that's the case. I mean, you know, and to be fair, there are plenty of people who willingly, who want to trade privacy for security, freedom for security. There are, there are plenty of people who, who, you know, who, who honestly think that if like, if you don't have anything to hide, then you shouldn't worry about, you know, you should, you should be okay with the government getting into your stuff, for instance. I mean, that, that I mean, the, 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 this, this is, this is a viewpoint held by a lot of people. And there are a lot of people who generally speaking are so concerned about the safety of their families that they're willing to just chuck their rights and their freedoms as fast as they can, as long as they can uh, be safe. Or as Jeff Gamet uh, 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 corrected me uh, on this Wednesday's Apple Context Machine, that they'll trade it for the illusion of safety. That's the illusion of safety is is a great point. Simply because if you if you do it here in this one, you set a precedent and and. Okay, so, so let's just say that the bad guys do benefit from encryption. All right. Is it fair to say that the bad guys are going to benefit just as much for, from a backdoor? 
in just they're going to benefit in a different way. And benefit, benefit. If we if, if there's a back door, the bad guys may be different bad guys than the terrorists. Maybe the terrorists. Maybe yeah. I was just going to say, you know, a lot I mean, of different you know, kinds of bad guys. Yeah, there are, there are all kinds of different of different bad guys, and and anyone who uh, I mean, God, let's go back to let's go back to the uh, the late nineties and the early two thousands when everyone's concern was about the you know millions of computers that would be taken offline because of some uh, um, uh, virus that, that that got spread that that knocked out computer systems left and right, you know, and and I mean, we still have an issue with botnets all over the world. You know, the, the computers that have been taken over um, uh, by largely criminal organizations for, you know, sp anything from spamming to, you know, getting access to, to uh, trying to trying to access your, uh, you know, your logins and your credit card numbers and all that kind of stuff, your banking account information. Um, right now, our mobile phones are pretty secure against that sort of thing. And what the FBI is wanting is to take that away and it's just such a bad idea we, we don't i don't want our mobile phones to be the same sort of wild west for the bad guys that computers used to be and that computers continue to be to to a lesser extent though yeah and and see that's that's my point is that okay by doing this Yes, there's going to be uh, there's going to be a faction of society that is probably going to be protected, maybe a little more, or they're the bad guys are not going to be able to keep some of their plans. Uh, yeah, I'm, so, I'm not saying this right. If it if it if it uh, if if encryption remains, yes, the bad guys do have the potential to be able to keep some secrets a little bit better. The good guys will have the prob pr probably be able to keep some secrets a little bit better. But if it yeah. if it goes the other way. The bad guys are going to have advantages into uh, by, by being able to get into a lot more, just like the good guys will. So you know, I and I don't know you know how, how you you put it on the scale and which way does it tilt, but once the horse is out of the barn, it's done. At least yeah. for, at least for this particular encryption scheme. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but as I understand it, there's nothing wrong. Or there's nothing preventing Apple from you know in the next version of iOS of introducing yet another unbreakable encryption scheme but then we're going to fight the same battle um yeah it dep dep depends on how apple does it and it depends on what kind of legislation would be passed um this fight that's being fought right now you know it's it, so it's they're invoking the all Writs act which is a 1789 law uh that essentially allows uh, the government to compel cooperation for anything that isn't otherwise covered by statute that's sort of like the poor end version of what the All Rights Act uh, does. Um, it's only possible in part because it's an it's an iPhone 5C, which doesn't have what the iPhone 6 and later devices uh, have in terms uh, in terms of security. Uh, if it was running an earlier version of iOS, Apple actually would be able to uh, unlock it without creating this backdoor. Uh, so you know it's kind of it's kind of a perfect storm for the FBI to pursue this. I believe that that's one reason why they're they are doing so. Um, I believe that while the FBI generally want has a legitimate desire to make sure there's nothing nothing on this phone, considering what the anyway all of uh, I'm I'm going down a rabbit hole. This. The particulars of this case, I think, are less important to the FBI than setting the precedent. And if legislation is passed that says no device shall exist that that the manufacturer can't get into, how is Apple going to actually get around that? And that you're right. That's a problem. That's a problem. Just like th there's, uh, I don't know if it's uh, what the resolution is or if it's been resolved yet, but. There's something in France that, that France is going to want to find Apple something r ridiculous, like a million dollars or something per phone, if if they don't uh, drop the encryption or don't create a back door. And it's like, you know, really? I mean, well, the UK the UK would do something similar. There's been yeah. legislation introduced in California and in New York, uh, you know, because because 
the one group of people we really want handling this would be state level legislators, legislators, right? They're really the folks who need to be governing this particular issue. That, that drives me extra nuts. Um, there's, there is an on, there, there will be an increasing onslaught of our ability to have private devices and if Apple loses this case, that onslaught will be a torrent and it will be unstoppable. I mean, we, we, we can just all kiss having secure devices. We can just kiss it goodbye. Brian, are, the, are, are these political opportunists, do you think, at, at both the state and federal level that are, are, are trying to introduce I, legislation like Representative Jolly? I think... Or are they just well-meaning but but misguided, mis uh, uninformed? And and I realize I just called, you know, somebody in in government uninformed, but I, I don't know how else to characterize it. Well, we're all uninformed on on some things. It's just some of us have the power to introduce legislation, and others of us don't. Um, I mean, you know, not everybody can be an an expert on this, but I, I certainly would like to see legislators who are who are wanting to get involved in this, I wish they would actually get themselves educated. And like I said, this is, this stuff isn't rocket scientists. Uh, this stuff is not rocket science and it's been well understood in the encryption and security worlds for decades, decades and decades and decades. The information is out there. There are plenty of people who will talk to these folks. They just need to go out and do it. But I assume they're well-meaning. I don't, I don't think they're, I mean, you know, the, the the DOJ and the FBI both accused Apple of 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 fighting this uh, in some kind of PR stunt, which is like insulting, offensive, and and strikingly ignorant, in my opinion. Um, but since then, like Director Comey, in his last two uh, congressional hearings, very specifically said there are no bad guys here. And this last hearing that we, we briefly alluded to about 10 minutes ago, um, he said specifically that uh, um, I, I still don't like that he said this, but it's a lot more conciliatory. He said that, the, that, that Apple has a responsibility to its shareholders to, you know, to fight this. And of course, you know, their, their, their responsibility is making money. Um, the, the funny thing to me is that I, I don't, I actually think that Tim Cook is putting up a fight on this at a principle and not over money and not over marketing. I think that Apple thinks that this is a very, very serious issue because it is. And, and that's a matter of interpretation. And, and the, that's the one thing that I have to disagree with you just a little bit on. I think that, that uh, the director taking that shot at Apple is a fair shot simply because Apple has for quite some time now preceding this event um, has really touted the security of iOS and the fact that they could, wanted to continue down that path. It is a competitive uh, co competitive advantage, no question about it. So I think that's a fair shot. I don't think it's necessarily an accurate shot, and I don't think it should be you know, the, the basis on which you assume Apple is doing all of this, because I think then you get into all the other arguments that have been put forth in the congressional hearings. But I, I, I don't, that, doesn't, that didn't offend me as much simply because I think they're to say there's a grain of truth may not be exactly the, the right phrase, but to say that that is a, a, an interpretation of, of Apple's marketing is probably fair. Yeah, I'm okay with them being wrong about it. Okay. Yeah, it didn't get anywhere there. Uh, and, and we don't really know. We don't really know Tim Cook's mind, of course. Um, but I, I, I think that Apple's marketing position here is actually started from the principle of, of the importance of security. I don't really have. I can't. I can't back that up. It's just my read on the situation. Right. No, and, and and I don't disagree. I don't think that that is. Uh, I don't think if so, if if Apple loses this, I don't think suddenly my iPhone becomes any less attractive, because frankly, if Apple loses this, then all the encryption in Android and every other every other yeah, operating everyone system else too. is is going to be lost. So my iPhone still remains just as good as what it was. It just becomes a bit more prob problematic for a lot of things moving forward, and that that I don't want to see happen. Yeah, just don't ever let you. If if Apple loses this fight, don't ever let your iPhone out of your sight for even a second. Okay.
Okay, where are you going with that? Well, if if these tools end up being created and they and they will eventually be leaked into the wild or replicated or um, uh, or 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 stolen, and people will develop devices that they can plug into your iPhone and unlock it and you know insert code and do whatever the heck they want with it. So you know, keep your iPhone on you at all times. Put it under your pillow when you sleep. It, it, you know, I realize you're being a little flip about it, but there's a lot of truth to it. Right now, it's not anything to worry about. But if the FBI gets its way, it will be. You know, certainly don't leave your iPhone sitting on a coffee table, which I, you know, again, a, a, the table in a coffee shop, which I've done. I wouldn't do that anymore. I, I'm, I'm curious because something you said there is, is something I've heard a lot. It makes the FBI sound uh, malicious. It, you know, I, lazy. No, but, 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 no, no. I, but let's let's table lazy for just a second, okay? There, there's been a, a group, or there's there's a mindset out there that the FBI has has been looking for this particular case, a case that involved terrorism, a case that, as we said at the outset, that there's nobody that can disagree that we want to get this information to get the terrorists. Yeah, the, the the terrorist is dead, and the owners of the phone happens to be a governmental agency which is given permission for for uh, for access. It's a perfect storm. Okay, so they've been waiting for this to try to test this issue or push this issue. I I don't know I don't know how I feel about that because I've heard compel honest to God I've heard compelling arguments in both directions. You know, one is that these guys are just trying to do their jobs. To the best of their ability and maybe are a bit uninformed about the potential implications of doing this particular job and then there are others that are very convincing when it say you know well they could have done it here they could have done it here they could have done it here they decided to do it here and it's because of the emotional nature of this of this task um and i'm, I'm curious to see you do, know it's, do you buy into that it's possible no i gotta go back to the lazy thing because there, there's sort of a meta level thing here Being able to slurp up communications and sift through it looking for bad things is super awesome if your job is to stop bad things from happening. And I'm talking more about the NSA and the CIA there, the NSA in particular, I suppose. Um, if you're a law enforcement agency, say some a law enforcement agency is powerful and is big, um, as the uh, CIA, the FBI, I'm sorry, it is super awesome to be able to get a hold of a repository of information that's going to tell you almost everything you could possibly want to know about the bad guy. That's super awesome. You got their, you got their smartphone. You just, you've got their world, right? And up until now, they've largely had access to those things. And, and that's made their job in some ways easier. And when your job is to stop bad things from happening or to catch the people who did bad things, you want every tool at your disposal to do that. And almost entirely for the right reasons. You're because your your job, your your heart is probably in stopping these bad things and catching these bad people. Probably not. There's always bad people, there's always bad people on the side of law enforcement too, but the vast majority of people who are in the FBI or the CIA or the NSA or, or you know, local police, they're, they're, they're all good people doing, doing their best to do the right thing for the right reasons at the right time. And when something comes along, when, when you've been able to do this all super awesome thing, which is to have these devices that gives you all the information, information and something comes along that threatens it well you'd kind of like to get it back you'd kind of like to 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 make it where you can continue to do this super awesome thing and when you and that's that's why i mean the, the word lazy is 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 offensive and and it's probably more insulting than i should be but I think that, uh, and really, I really want to apply the term lazy to more like the NSA and the CIA, who uh, 
who once upon a time had boots on the ground everywhere, and that's how they got their information. But the more that electronic and then digital communications became a thing, the more they began relying on just scooping it all up and sifting through it, looking for whatever they wanted. And, 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 and they would rather do that than do the hard work of, of having boots on the ground. And it's real easy for me to sit here and say this in my bedroom or my office, actually. But the, the, the reality is, is the way the internet developed, the way smartphones de developed, it provided this, this grand opportunity for these people whose job it is to stop bad things from happening and to catch the bad guys. It, it made their job easier and they want to keep it that way. But the problem is, is that there are more and more bad guys who can figure this stuff out too and can use those same vectors to, to get information from us to do bad things. As a matter of fact, there are more of them than there are of our good guys, and we want to not let that happen. And so I don't... I am sure that the FBI is maximizing its opportunity here but I'm not going to demonize them for doing so. I understand why they want this super awesome thing. I totally understand it. I just don't want them to get it because if they get it, we're all in more danger. We all have less security. So yeah, I won't, I won't demonize. I, I, yeah, I won't demonize them for, for trying to get it. I just don't want them to get it. Is this another example of, of the internet changing how something works sure i mean because i feel like there's there there are some some root causes here that are being overlooked um you just said you know that there are more bad guys that can figure this stuff out well yeah because we have an incredible incredibly easy dissemination of information sometimes it's not information that you'd prefer somebody to have on the other hand you know i it, you and i both remember the days of just online bulletin boards and of course, who didn't download, you know, a file on how to make a pipe bomb? Not because I, you plan to I, make a pipe bomb, but I didn't. you didn't. Yeah, right. I didn't. It's sitting right there out of curiosity. You know, you're going to look. If at I, okay, if I had seen such a file, I probably, I probably would have downloaded it, but I, I didn't see them. So, uh, yeah, just you, to be fair, you've had a pure life. <laughs> Oh, 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 brother. <laughs> no, you know, you, you look at those kind of things, and now you, know, you can you can go and, and find that kind of thing, uh, along with all kind of great information, but good and bad, it's all going to be disseminated. And so, yeah, you're going to... And you, you, you're you much more likely to be able to, to connect with people of like mind for good and for bad. And that's... That's well, uh, there's a lot of that uh, of that that is affecting this that we're not uh, finding a way to uh, properly address at least from a law enforcement perspective. This is one of the reasons why I got so tense when the CIA director and the deputy director of the NSA um, both essentially blamed the press in a, in a separate congressional hearing for educating the terrorists about encryption. And I mean it's it's just it's uh, it's, it's such not so for, like for one thing by the way. The press's job is not to worry about what the terrorists learn from what they say. The press's job is to disseminate information. Uh, secondly, um, the one of the reasons why the press talks about things like encryption is because we all need it. And so the CIA or the, F, or the NSA wanting them not to talk about it is essentially saying that they want us not to have it either. That bothers me. Uh, but it's also, it's also this this. Re it suggests a ridiculous desire to stuff the genie back in the bottle that if everyone would just shut up yapping about this encryption stuff, the bad guys would never figure it out. And that is an idiotic way to think the bad guys are going to find out about this stuff, you know, and uh, you, we, we, we can't stuff this genie back in the bottle and I'm, and I'm, I'm just so intellectually outraged at these forces that want to pretend that we can. And that may be the best, the, one of the best statements you've made tonight, that you can't put the genie back in the bottle. It's out. It may not have, it, it, a lot of people may, it, it, a lot of non-technology average citizen kind of people may, may not have been aware of the, of the encryption information and everything. 
on the other hand, I think they had to be just, just a little because, you know, for, for your credit card to be encrypted, for your website to be encrypted, for your bank uh, to have encrypted communications and all, everybody recognized that as a really good thing. And, and that's, you know, that's the thing that, that really kind of blows me away, that this was a good thing three, three or four weeks ago. And now all of a sudden Apple is evil or, or is being portrayed as evil or not cooperative, depending on where you fall in the spectrum, for not breaking this. So, <laughs> you know, what does that do, as we've been saying, what does that do to my online transactions with my bank? What, is it, what does it do to my online transactions with my broker? or with my legal counsel. Same situation, you know, it's it's all going to be potentially out there for someone with the technical expertise. And there, there are an awful lot of people who don't have the expertise to go and find a tool that will restore that. And if, and if this goes too far, it could be made illegal to even create those tools. Right. And that's just flat out terrifying. Yeah, it's just, it's, I, I, every, every, every adjective I want to apply is rather insulting. And I'm, I'm actually trying to eliminate ad hominem attacks from my arsenal of, uh, of, uh, rhetoric. Um, and I, I keep running into that desire, um, in this particular issue. I, I completely understand because you, and, and by the way, we are seeing it from both sides of the political aisle. It's, it's not just from one or the other. You know, it's from both sides that some seem to be demonstrating an understanding and appreciation of the situation, and some are just like, you know... Well, it's, but it's not equally from both sides, man. It well, is on both sides, it, but it's not equally on both sides. Well, I'm not going to pretend to try to, you know, pretend that I've taken a roll call on, on at, at, at the state or federal level. But, you know, there are people on both sides that get it, and there are people on both sides that don't. Yes, that is true. So, you know, that's, I, I prefer to, to go back to something you said. I prefer to point them as educated and uneducated and, and in, in the ways of, of encryption and the understanding that this is a black and white issue. You know, and, and if, if, if you decide to vote, you know, for, for Apple to put the back door in and you truly understand this, I can disagree with you, but you know, that's, I'm not going to say it's okay, but it's okay because at least you understand the genie that you're about to let out of the bottle. But when, when you're just doing it because you're short-sighted and don't understand what's going on here and say things like, well, you know, the government should get together with Silicon Valley and figure out a way to let us have, get in and yet protect everything. I mean, that's just, that's just showing your ignorance. Sorry. Yeah, I agree. I, you know, to, to that end, uh, I was surprised. I, I, it was, by my count, it was roughly five to seven on the House Judiciary Committee that was uh, um, that had Director Comey, FBI Director Comey, uh, in a quote unquote panel, and then the second panel had Bruce Sewell, General Counsel of Apple, um, uh, Miss uh, Landau, who is a professor somewhere. She's awesome and super smart, and I really I just love her to death. And I can't remember where she uh, is a professor. And then uh, Cy Vance, who is uh, someone else. <laughs> I'm a professional. Anyway, uh, that was the second panel. And Bruce Sewell was, was awesome. But in the questioning of, of, of both panels, um, it was roughly five to seven um, in terms of being for the FBI uh, as opposed to being for Apple slash privacy with more but with the seven being on the side of Apple and privacy. And I was also delighted that I would say eight of them were actually asking intelligent questions and, and saying things that weren't factually wrong. Um, one of the people who was actually on our side, I believe it was Miss uh, Lofgren, who's, um, I think she's a California representative. Could be wrong on that. Uh, she referenced she was clearly on apple side here but she referenced uh, the uh, celebrity nude hack the leaks that was uh, a thing back about six months ago um and that wasn't a hack that was actually just people guessing passwords you know apple's system wasn't hacked although apple does get to be dinged 
for allowing unlimited uh, tries, something that Apple has since fixed. But it wasn't a hack. But anyway, she referenced that as an ex as an example of why the FBI, FBI was wrong to say it's okay for Apple to create these tools because Apple is really good at keeping secrets, which is part of the FBI's stance on this, that, that it's okay for Apple to create this backdoor because Apple's going to be able to keep a secret. Now, Jeff Gamet um, has pointed out uh, that when it comes to a case where there's a defendant, they, they would be able to uh, subpoena that software that Apple created in order to test it so that, so that they could try to, um, uh, 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 you know, to, uh, contest or, or, uh, the, 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 accuracy of the information that's involved. I mean, if Apple creates this, the stuff isn't going to stay inside Apple. It's just not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not. And, um, um, my point there, my belabored rabbit hole point was that, the. Uh, most of the representatives on the panel were asking smart, intelligent questions that actually made sense. And uh, it was very refreshing because this wasn't the Senate, uh, the, the, the House subcommittee on data encryption. This was, this was the Judiciary Committee. You know, this isn't necessarily their, their area of expertise, but most of the people that came to the hearing came to the hearing armed with uh, solid information. And it was refreshing. Yeah, that's, I was just going to say that's encouraging. That, that's encouraging, again, yeah. so that they can make an informed decision. They could easily make an informed decision you and I don't like, but at least it's an informed decision. Yes. As, as opposed to Representative Jolly. Sorry, but, you know, that's... Or Representative Trey Gowdy, who just... He, he, he's another one who just can't see past, oh, my God, it's a terrorist act, and we have to do everything we can to help the government. And just, you know, and, and uh, Representative uh, Sensenbrenner, same thing. He's just, he's just furious at Apple, furious at Apple for not, for not uh, helping the FBI out here. One other point I want to make sure we touch on, because, I, again, I've heard the term privacy advocates used so often in, in the mainstream media um, that the, the privacy advocates say this, privacy advocates say that. I guess by a strict definition, maybe privacy advocates is an okay term. But it just it, it bothers me because it just sounds like some radical fringe part, and and we we're right back to the same thing that you know the mainstream people believe that yeah you you should do everything you can to prevent a terrorist attack to find out find out more about them to prevent the next one, and and we agree with that it, right up to the point where you endanger everybody else by taking their encryption, so I. I just that, that particular term, I just think anytime you hear that, folks, please don't think that they're a bunch of far right or far left people that, you know, look at it this way. Um, that's the way they're being couched, and I just, I don't like that either. Hmm. I, I'd, I'd much rather have encryption experts, you know, technologists, <laughs> security experts. But, you know, I, Chuck, I don't, I don't really care what kind of, if... People want to erroneous, erroneously ascribe false attributes to a group. I don't. I'm not going to change the name just because of that. I mean, I mean, privacy is a good thing. People who want to demonize privacy, I don't really care what they think. Yeah, but that's Brian. That's you, and and I don't know that that serves the the, the ultimate goal here of of knocking this down. If 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 the mainstream people, I don't know. I got to find a term for that. But if, if the average person who doesn't understand technology hears it characterized that way, then I have I, I tend to think that they therefore then go with certain assumptions or beliefs. And and that to me that's you know, that is something the media should be blamed for. Because I don't think they're they are describing those people properly or correctly. Haters gonna hate, brother. Yeah. I, I you know, I just I, I can't I won't take responsibility for for the shortcomings of of everybody on the planet. I, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that you're suggesting I should. I mean, but it, it's it's there's a there's a limit to there's a limit to to there's a limit to how much I care about people who are just wrong. Oh, I agree with that. But don't, but as now now put your other one of your other hats on. As a journalist, doesn't it bother you to turn on? 
the morning news shows and see statements that are that are grossly incorrect. Well, sure, but keep in mind, I'm the world's worst journalist. I don't care I'm, if you're I'm the a, world's worst journalist. You, you, I'm a great analyst. I'm not a I'm not a good journalist, but no, I do. Yeah, I don't I don't like seeing people get anything wrong. That's for sure. But I don't think th- we we this is this is a this is a very cozy rabbit hole that we've dived into. But um, um, if if the issue is whether or not we should call people privacy advocates, um. I'm not going to – it's a fine term to me. It's a lovely term to me, and I don't care if some people misunderstand it. As long as – as long maybe as it's taken literally and not figuratively. Because I guess if, if, I'm, if I'm advocating for Apple, I guess I am a privacy advocate by, by definition. Well, but, you, shouldn't be, you shouldn't be advocating for or against Apple here. You're, you're, to me – to me, the thing you want to hang your hat on is is privacy and security, or or um, uh, you know the the other version of security, which is uh, uh, public safety. You know, the other version. What do you? Uh... So, you both sides can claim the term security in this case. Okay. Apple should help this to, to because because it's a security issue. And right. in reality, Apple should not do this thing the FBI has asked because it's a security issue. Okay. Both, both sides can claim that particular term. So I was, I, I was struggling for a, um, a way to differentiate that. Okay. So I know that I can. Yeah. And this may be a rabbit hole. This may be just, you know, you, you talk about the things that offend you. Those things offend me because I think they're trying to make this so broad. When you started this out, Brian, at the, the, the very first, and folks go back and listen because I think Brian did an amazing job in just one rather lengthy sentence of talking about all the forces at work here, all the all the players in the game, and what you know what they stand to gain, what they stand to lose. The, and probably the only I'm, I'm not sure if you said the kind of the rest of us because we all stand to lose a great deal here in in this game, and so I guess that's why I get so I, I guess. If you notice, I've been st- trying to stay away from the term, the terms Republican, Democrat, um, you know, privacy advocates, you know, uh, Silicon Valley versus Washington versus law enforcement. I, I, I know that those are general labels, but depending on where you sit, you know, you may see one of those as the good guys and one as the bad guys. And I, I think Comey did a great job. There no, there's, this is not a bad argument. There are no bad guys at this table. So, you know, it's just we need to have informed people at this table, regardless of where they sit. Sure, we do. And, and I'll, about this, as a side note, I will also give Comey uh, uh, credit for a, a very good panel. Uh, I also thought that he did a very good job of, of when he was asked a question that wasn't where the asker wasn't asking his opinion, where the asker was actually asking something along the lines of, you know, what are what what are the factors involved in this he actually gave he did a very good job of of presenting a very unbiased version of that every answer that i saw you know when he asked when he was asked his opinion he would give opinions that i largely disagreed with not always but largely um but when he was asked something that wasn't his opinion he did a he did an excellent job of, of presenting things in a very very unbiased fashion so just give him credit where it's due because I was I was I was pretty angry about his open letter that he wrote about two weeks ago. Well, I think it was kind of hard not to be, honestly. Yeah, and, and his testimony was was sort of like a night and day difference between between that open letter and uh, um, uh, and, and what he said during the testimony. Do you think that he suddenly, well, not suddenly, but but in the time in between, he's become either more educated about the facts? Or do you think he suddenly realized that there's a bit of a sleeping giant that has been somebody hit the alarm clock and it, it woke up and he's he's not finding this is the easy sledding he thought it might be? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I I actually characterized him as a liar from the open letter because he said things like this, you know, this only involves this case. And it's just factually not true. Do you think it's, he should have believed it, though, Brian? I, no, I don't. The man is a very accomplished attorney. He's he is smart. I, I 
I don't believe it. And note that in his last two House hearings that he testified for, he admitted that it that it, that, that it could set a precedent. He's actually said that it will uh, it will be instructive to other courts, is what he said. And that's a very, 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 very whitewashed way to say precedent. Yes, it's going to be a precedent, and he knows it's going to be a, a precedent. If 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 they're citing a, a similar precedent to get this to happen, the similar precedent is is New York Telephone. Do you do you know about that? So it was a case in 1978, and the FBI. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, they wanted to tap phones being used by what they thought was an illegal booking operation. At least I think that's what it was, right? But it was, it was some some illegal activity. They wanted to tap some phones, and they wanted New York Telephone's help in tapping those phones. New York Telephone said no. And the FBI said, well, you've got these pin registers right here. And pin registers, I don't, I don't know what pin registers are, but apparently there's some kind of uh, physical device uh, that were already present, and all the, all New York Telephone had to do was to give the FBI access to these pin registers, and and boom, they get their they get their taps without the without the uh, people that they were investigating being any the wiser, and they're able to tap those those uh, uh, phone calls uh, all by warrant, all all legally speaking, and they used the All Writs Act to get this, and a judge said, yep, you got to, you got to let the FBI use your pen registers. And this is the case, you know, the, 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 uh, uh, the, uh, New York telephone company was not a defendant in a case, but the whole thing became a precedent because that's how our legal system works. So if the, the, the FBI is citing a similar precedent and then saying, but this won't set a precedent, that's not true. It's just not true. It's, factually wrong and i i don't what i think is that director comey director comey he says that that one of the reasons why he says this will only apply to this particular case is because the specifics of what apple is ordered to do the code that apple ended up creating will only address that particular phone. But once it's created, it can be, or Apple can be ordered to create it again and again. And then once it's created, and if Apple accedes to this, Apple has, has, has been complicit in uh, establishing the, pres- the precedent that the All Writs Act can be used to compel it to create software code to do this thing. And they will be compelled to do it again and again and again. So he is either being deliberately obtuse and pretending that the specifics of the case, the technical specifics of the case won't apply to other devices while pretending that that, 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 that also means that the uh, legal specifics won't apply to another case. One of those is true and one of those is wrong, and it's the one that's wrong that's the most important. And he, he, he knew that. And now he's not claiming that same thing that he claimed in that open letter. So I don't know. What did he did he get educated? Did he see the light? Has he actually gotten a lot more information? Did did he have a conversation with Tim Cook? Did did they did they bring in some encryption experts to talk about this? Did the NSA and the CIA have a conversation with him going like, dude, what are you talking about? It's not how it works. I mean, I I, I don't know. Did he see the light? Or is did did maybe was maybe that open letter just not quite what he actually meant to say? I don't know. I'm trying to see the director of the FBI being uh, addressed as dude. If you're the director of the NSA, you can kind of address people however you want to, can't you? <laughs> Good point. Good point. Brian, we spent this all this time kind of looking at where it is now and where we've come from. Where is it going? Where, do, where does it go from here? Um, I think Apple will win on the All Ritz Act. And then we need to have then we need to have some actual legislation that deals with this. I think that I think that Apple has a very compelling First uh, Amendment uh, defense that it's being that it's being compelled to speak and that it has a free right uh, a free speech right not to uh, code is speech. By the way, that that's been long that there was a legal precedent set for that long ago. Um, I think that Apple could probably win on the specifics of being ordered to do something 
you know, it's it, the difference between New York Telephone and what Apple is being ordered to do is that New York Telephone already had these pin registers in place. All they had to do is give the ac- give access to the FBI. With the case against Apple, Apple is being ordered to create something that doesn't exist. And I think that Apple has a good case fighting it on those merits too. Um, and the there, there's two dissenting uh, district court actions on this now. Uh, one of them is the one where Apple was ordered to do this. The other one is a case in Manhattan dealing with a drug dealer's phone where a judge said that the FBI is is way overreaching and it has a lot of nerve trying to use the All Rights Act to do this. That's not how he said it, but but he, you know, he used roughly 50 pages to to uh, get that point across. Um, and so you have two conflicting opinions. They're going to go to higher courts. I think the higher courts would probably find in favor of, of Apple. It would be interesting if it goes to the Supreme Court, with the Supreme Court being um, uh, uh, with the Republicans uh, uh, not being willing to seat anyone uh, while Obama is president. So, you know, we've got a, we've got a four – um, a four to four split. If the Supreme Court ends up being split, whatever action, whatever opinion was being taken up to that, that, they, that they were that they, that they were um, hearing will stand. So that remains to be seen what will happen there. All right, I, 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 we need to wrap up, but I can't I can't let that go. Ha! I, I personally really do not. I mean, you and I love to joust about politics, but I really don't see this as 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 as, as a partisan issue. And and maybe it's because I'm looking at it technologically and not the, the Apple and FBI thing. Yeah, I I don't I I, I, will, I will be hugely disappointed in pretty much everybody if this if this were to be decided politically. Um, I, I just, I, you know, because you're you're talking about the Republicans and the Democrats, and that implies that this this has a political basis of some kind. And I sincerely, sincerely hope the makeup of the court has a political basis. The the, make, the makeup of the court, but at some point, once you get to that, once you get to that level, the politics should be put aside, and you should, sure, you, the the party that put you there, you may have sympathies with the way they believe, but I would, I really hope that this doesn't. This doesn't have that much of a political bias going. Well, I think um, just being being very clinical about it, Chuck. Um, I, I I I do find this intellectually perplexing. Um, the Republican Party, generally speaking, is against government intrusion into our lives, unless it's reproductive rights and unless it's privacy. And when it comes to when it comes to national security. Republicans tend to want to pitch everything uh, out in the name of in the name of of uh, um, national security when it comes to privacy and stuff. And and I find those I find those concepts to be at odds. Uh, don't get me wrong; there are plenty of Democrats that uh, uh, have, in my opinion, erred on this too. Diane Feinstein is just constantly on the wrong side. She's the, she's one of one of my uh, senators out here in California. Um, she is always making the wrong decisions when it comes to uh, issues of privacy and it drives me nuts. Um, so, I mean, no one party is, is perfectly good on this, but by and large, the forces that are lining up on the side of Apple should do this because national security tend to be on the right. Not all of them, but they tend to be. And the people that are, that are, that are, and, and Except for the people who are true, who, who actually understand what the notion of limited government and 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 the government shouldn't be uh, uh, snooping into our lives, those folks on the right are also uh, 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 on Apple side. So I mean, there's, I mean, it's definitely complex. Oh yeah, yeah. Folks, I'm I'm going to wrap this up by saying, you know, don't take Brian's word for it. Don't take my word for it. This is exactly what I said at the end of the Mac jury discussion we had uh, a little while ago. Go out, research for yourself, get educated about it. Use us as one of your resources, but by all, no, by all means, not the only resource. Then make up your mind and call your legislators and tell them which which way you think they should vote. It's it, this is really critical for the way that for those of us in the United States this is going to go, and it, it can have a lot of wide-reaching implications outside too. 
Yeah, the, the last thing I would ever want anyone to do is to actually use me as their basis for just about anything. But um, the uh, there is nothing to vote on yet. No, but I, I you, think you can tell them your opinions on the on the issue of security and privacy, but there is nothing for anyone to vote on yet. We're still in the early days of all this. Um, the issue between the FBI and, and Apple right now, while there are congressional hearings involving this, this is for now a uh, judiciary branch thing. But it's not too late to lay that groundwork and start start Absolutely. To, start to take up and start to again start to educate yourself on it. Um, because it's it's so easy, I think, and that's this is also goes back to where we started. These are complex issues, and, Very. and the morning news and the evening news and a lot of the drive-by media are trying to make it a simple issue, and it's not. It's not. They're they're picking their favorite simplistic view on this, and and trying to get you to see it their way, for whatever whatever their motivations, and that's what's dangerous. This is complex. Take some time because it has a lot of implications. Yeah, here, here. And I, Brian, I, I seriously disagree with you. I think you are very, very much someone that people should pay attention to. <laughs> Maybe not agree with, but you know, pay attention to. Well, thank you. So That's very kind of you. You spent a lot of time going through this, a lot, a lot more time than many of us have, you know, to to do it. And so we rely on trusted sources like you. Well, thank you, man. So I mean, but, it. You, very kind. Of you. you and Jeff and the crew at TMO. Great job. Thanks, man. We'll do it again. I had a bunch of stuff that I wanted to get to with you, but this this is just so I important, know. and you know, it's it's hard not to dig into it. So yeah, well, uh, let's uh, um, let's uh, let's do it again in a couple weeks. Sounds good to me. Sounds All good right. to me. Uh, right, quick. Yes. Folks can obviously find you at the Mac Observer on the Apple Context Machine. Yep. Pretty regularly on the Daily Observations podcast. Yep. Um, what's your Twitter handle? TMO Brian, that's Brian with a Y. And my personal blog is Geektells, T E L L S. Great. Dot com. Geektells.com. Good to see you, Brian. Thanks so much for the time. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks for having me, man. Folks, thank you for uh, for enduring yet another discussion of FBI versus Apple, but I can't stress enough, this is really important stuff. Until the next time, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for links, show notes, to subscribe, to connect with Chuck on Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and the Mac Voices blog. Subscribe to our weekly newsletter, the Mac Voices Dispatch, to stay up to date on all the latest Mac Voices news from our front page or at macvoices.com slash newsletter. Do more with your Apple tech by subscribing to the free Mac Voices magazine on Flipboard, by visiting macvoices.com slash magazine. Advertising and sponsorships handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.